It's wonderful to be alive. Amen. I've chosen to, at the last moment, I thought singers were going to come, and I had the impression that they'd take the whole service, and I get here, and they're not here. Amen. So, the word of the Lord tells us to be instant, in season, and out of season. And I said, Lord, give me something to share with the people tonight's worthwhile. And so I've asked um, Clark to read one verse of Scripture. And he'll tell you where it's at. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for the privilege you've given to us to live and for the opportunities that you've given to us to share the message of hope and cheer. Amen. Not just in church, but on the sidewalks, at work, driving a car, and whatever was required. So thank you, Lord, for this wonderful privilege you've given to us to gather in your house to pray when there's scores and scores of people living along the banks of the river. Their homes are gone. Their cars are gone. And you're just lucky to get out with their lives. And I, don't, I hope you don't forget the anguish that these people are going through. Pray for them all the time. Amen. And if you can be a blessing to some of them, do it. For it is day, for the night cometh when you cannot. He's speaking about time, how important to us that time is. I read an article in a, a Reader's Digest. No, it was a, a, a magazine. It was about a famous... A guy that stood up and told jokes and called people to laugh and carry on. His father came from Lebanon, and so did he, of course. And his father got sick. I mean, really sick. But the father was a man who planned on going back home and have a celebration. He talked about it. But every time he got ready to go, he had another opportunity to make a million. So he became a multimillionaire. And his sickness increased. And finally, his son said, I took him to the hospital. And as we drove into the hospital, he read a sign from over the hospital door that about cancer. And he said to his son, do I have cancer? And his son he said, you talk to your doctor. So he talked to his doctor. She said, yes, you have cancer. And he's in his last stages. We've asked you to come. We can help you through this crucial time in your life and be a blessing of some kind. Then he turned over and looked at his family and all of his friends that are gathered in. And he raised up in bed and closed his fist and shook his fist at God and said to him, you have taken away from me the only possession I have is my time. Hmm. Think about it for a few moments. You spend years and years and spend all how many years you spend in school training yourself for a better job. That's blessed. Thank you. Good. Amen. That's wonderful. However, you spend all your time building houses, building beautiful yards. Amen. So when people drove by your house, 
they say that's where Mr. Green lives in his family. He's done a wonderful job. But as time goes on, Mr. Green gets older and older and older. And then he winds up in a place that he despises. It was a nursing home. And everything that he had accomplished in life, beautiful house and friends and equipment, this, not and the other, all left behind. And the only thing that will last in his life to come will be what he did do this time and what he gave away. You now he supported the pastor and supported missions. And he spent a lot of time working in the community, visiting the sick, taking old people to church and so on and so forth. That's the only thing that he'll, he'll be able to take with you. Time is a beautiful thing. We must use all the time that we have left to try our best to bring some soul to the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. You can do it. You have plenty of opportunities and you let them slip because you don't feel capable. You're not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher. You just have to be a man or woman with a vision for the lost. You'd like to spend your time doing things, supporting every cause in the church. Amen. Spend some of your time working in his kingdom and believing that what you're doing will not be lost. Because when you reach heaven, and after you bowed before him and reached up and looked at him, he would say to you, well done, my child. You see, that's all I expect. I'm not expecting a crown. I'm not expecting any stars in a so-called crown. I'm not looking for a mansion. I'm looking for a place in the mansion. If you read your Bible carefully, it doesn't say anything about you going to heaven and having a mansion. He said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. Have you ever read that? Then if you haven't, read it. But it'd be a wonderful place. If it's inside a mansion, fine. If it's now, it's still good. Amen. Thank the Lord for all the time that he's given Mom and I. She's 93, and I'll be 93 in a few months. And then we'll start on 94. If Jesus turns any longer, we'll start on 95. Amen. But my time is not wasted in, 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 in <laughs> down on my knees and broken hearted because I'm not on the road anymore. No. Because I've used the time as God has given to me to do other things. Tomorrow, we're going to send $6,000 to finish a church in Burkina Faso that costs the, the church itself. $30,000, and we're going to give them six to finish to finish the touches on it. And then, Borema has told us he needs 35 churches. The Lord willing, we're going to send him five churches in the near future. He'll be coming, we'll wait until he comes, and then we'll see what we can do. So you see, 
even though you may be handicapped in many ways, you still have time. You still have a voice. You still have a prayer time. And if you're, if you're blind, you'll find some way to know about the Lord. Amen. So I challenge you tonight to devote your attention to the time that you have lived. And if you come, I said to the close, when you're not able to drive anymore and not able to read anymore, you still have the ability to touch people's lives with how you live in the darkness of the time. Hallelujah. I think uh, sometimes I get down in, in, in the dumps, you know. I get to think about living in a nursing home. That's one of the things I never did want to do, but here I am. I can accept that and do something about it or sit around and gripe. And so I've decided to do something. I still have the, the channels open with television and uh and, and uh, electric stuff to pr produce uh, some things to create interest in building a tabernacle. Amen. I think that would be the greatest experience in a lifetime, to give money to build a tabernacle. Then, at the close of life, go into heaven and be shown the tabernacle that you built full of people. Well, amen, amen. I can close my eyes, which I can't see any of, but I got eyes, I can close them. And I can sit and listen by faith, I can hear them singing as you walk towards the church. Those singers have been there ever since sunup, and they've been singing the gospel song. I've never had anything so thrilling in my life to go back to Tanganyika, and what's called Tanzania now. And you get to the church, one church that I'd built. Of course, they'd built onto it, you see, 2,000. And they have 2,000, and some have to stand outside. And when we got there, it was a little bit late. When I stepped out of the car, they were singing. Singing a song in Swahili, which I understood. I sat there for a few moments and just listened to the song. Then I thought, what will it be like when the choir is gathered in heaven and as far as your eyes can see, there'll be a choir before. That'll be the only choir that I'll ever help be able to join and I've joined that crowd singing the song. Amen. Can you visualize it? Seeing that throng of people until your eyes fail. Oh, what a day. What a day that will be. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 In fact, I mean, I can sit here and I can listen to them sing. Oh, it's not a, a melody that you would hear in the States, but it's a song they sing because they've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Time. Time is all you have. Use that time.
to do something in his kingdom. Amen. Well, you, the things that you do all the time, you can postpone some of those things. Or you can just let them lay aside. Amen. It will be the value to you anyhow at the end of the time. Use your time to go talk to people for, and visit people and talk about Jesus. And, woo, hallelujah. Amen. So I believe that's a, a, a good place for me to stop tonight. And maybe Dr. McGee would have a little something to add to the service tonight. Doc? You know, catch you on a word. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, I think we need to be ready. I think we need to be doing lots of things. You know, we've had a vision here to build this place, to see not only that arena full of people, but this room here full of people. And we also have a vision to build churches in Africa. That's always been the third part of the vision. churches in Africa. He mentioned Pastor Barama. Barama is supposed to be here in a couple of weeks, I think. I, you know, we get emails occasionally and sometimes things change, but he's supposed to be coming. He's been here before. And he'll tell you about the churches. He, when we, when the missionary had to leave Niger, he was left with about 30 churches overseas. And he's done that. But in the interval, he's built 35 more, not built, planted. And each of those congregations might have 30 people, might have 200 people, but they're meeting under a tree somewhere in the building. And the amazing thing about Niger is when you build a church, you build it with a peaked roof, just like you think it's kind of like a pole barn, only with concrete sides. But everything else in that country has a round top. It's a Muslim country structures have a Muslim architecture, and the churches stand out like a sore thumb. Amen. And people see them and they go, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> what are those things? That's the church. They talk about Jesus there. And then a few years ago, Al-Qaeda came through Niger, and they got everybody stirred up, and they burned a bunch of churches all over Niger, the ones made out of wood. Churches are made out of steel and concrete, and they tried their best to burn our churches, and all they did was blacken the floor with the fire. They couldn't set them on fire, and the people saw that. You can't burn those down. <laughs> and it was a miracle. Mm. And at one point, a mob came, and I think it was Barama, tried to get Barama or one of them, and the of the neighborhood came out and rescued them. Muslim people came out and rescued them from the mob. So the word of God is really alive in Niger. Many things are happening. I hope when he comes he'll tell you about his daughter being raised in the Lord. So miracles and miracles all the time. And I think in our lives here we get pretty caught up with whatever's on stirred up about Congress or Russia or whatever, or some movie star or some rock band, and we're blowing our time, we're wasting our time and our effort and our energy on what we think about. We need to think about the Lord, and we need to listen to Him, because you know what? We've been born again. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. We've been anointed. Holy Spirit, each one of us. And God says that you're the righteousness of God in Christ. I didn't say it. God said it. Mm -hmm. I argue with him. You say, well, I don't feel very righteous. It's not about how you feel. It's what God did on the cross. And you need to draw near and get full of that power and speak his name every 
street where you go because people are on their way to hell. Willingly, knowingly. But there are some of them that you can turn back. Yes. With a word, with a kindness. And I know, I, I know all of you. I know that you do that. I know that you do that all the time. I've seen you do it. the only thing God gives us that we don't have any control over. We don't own it. We don't know we don't know if we'll be here tomorrow. We don't know if we'll make it home to go to bed. But the time he gives us, we need to spend to enjoy it as we can. Because the only the only thing you can take to heaven is what you've already put ahead up there. Hmm. thinking about it, because when Berema comes, we want to take an offering now, and we want to take up enough to build a church, so be thinking about it, praying about it, ask God what he wants you to do, what a glorious thing to see one of those things go up, and they go up quick, and the people come, it's an amazing thing, so, let's stand and pray, I'm done, you got more? I'd like to understand with us.